think you can start to go on the drive and mm -hmm. uh, we will start from this mm -hmm. uh, because we are all here now. Well, this is the people who assigned uh, to the workshop. We have, it's a tiny group, five motivated, I think, coordinators, most probably. Great. I don't know, do we want to make a little uh, welcome or who's here around? Yes, our plan, uh, so just uh, to do a small introduction if we start, mm -hmm. a small introduction, this uh, cooperation was uh, supposed to be organized between uh, Madalina, which is sick, and me, which has an event in Marseille, but uh, Marcus came uh, and uh, he will uh, do a great job, I'm sure. I will try to, to present our work that we did uh, this year with, uh, with Mada. And first, our plan was to, to do a short introduction around to, to see a bit the motivation of the people uh, that join our workshop, to understand why they came here, to present the, themselves uh, quickly and understand a bit uh, the motivation to join this uh, workshop, especially. Um, so I can uh, see the people, uh, maybe Christelle, you want to start to present yourself? Or maybe someone else? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was looking for the sound. Okay, I can, I can start if you want. Uh, hello, everybody. I don't see you, but uh, I think you are over there. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm Christelle. I'm from like the same, same kind of uh, association than Benjamin in Marseille. Um, the name is Eurasianet, and it's a mobility organization with some volunteers among Europe and uh, Asia. And now I'm interested in, in, the, in this workshop. Uh, because we are developing the long-term cooperation with uh, new partners and uh, I was curious to hear about the tool and everything. Okay, thank you, Christelle. Yes. Thank you. Uh, maybe Maria? You don't yes. have the mic here. Okay, now you hear me. Hello, everyone. My name is Maria. And I'm from Serbia, but I'm currently in Barcelona right now doing a project with the uh, European Solidarity Corps. So, um, well, I got introduced by this webinar <laughs> like today, and uh, I felt really connected with this topic and workshop because I also worked in a couple of uh, with a couple of organizations as well and on the different projects but currently i'm in one project for book exchange which is currently actually on the national level of course but um we will see where, where we will go so i hope that i can get some tools now and uh, yeah see what the future brings thank you thank you uh maybe simona Hello everyone, again, uh, I'm Simona, I'm from Steel Cyprus, it's an, it's a non-profit organization from Cyprus, as the name of the organization says already, and actually, currently, we already have an approved uh, ESC project, but um, we haven't started it yet, because we are waiting for the pandemic to let us receive some volunteers. So once we already have a project approved, it would be good to refresh and to get um, a bit more knowledge about the cooperation between the, between the partners. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, Simona. Uh, Levan, can you follow? Okay, it looks like you are not able to speak. Uh, I can't see the... Well, I, I can read it. I can read it for Levan. Uh, he's writing, I'm traveling right now and I cannot join with my voice. In 20 minutes, I will be able to fully commit it. Shortly, my name is Levan, coming from Georgia and representing youth organization Bitsi. Uh, no, Bitsi. Bitizi, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Levan, Bitizi. We, we are now a sending organization for SC and we have sent over 20 participants abroad in 2020. And we are hoping to host volunteers, volunteers soon too. Thank you, Levan, and looking forward to hear from you in 20 minutes. Thank you, Marcus. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know 
who are you, but I, I would be happy to hear you. If there is somebody be, uh, behind this, uh, <laughs> let us. Seems not, not so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I will put him or her in the waiting room and then the, the, the tech team can connect uh, with him or her to, to um, um, no, I cannot do that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, yeah. Uh, Marcus, do you want to present yourself quickly? Oh my God, why, yes, I do why that. You are, uh, why you are in this uh, work? Why, why I'm here, yes, that, uh, yeah. Um, I'm Markus, I'm working in Weimar, uh, European Youth Meeting Education Center, Weimar. Um, for many years, uh, working and living in Southeastern Europe, uh, Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, uh, running NGO in, in a small town uh, nearby in Erfurt, and then since 2012 or 13, being an uh, education program manager here in ALPV for international youth work. Um, and also, uh, among other topics, in charge for the ESC hosting ourselves, three volunteers, one you met already, Oksana, young lady who presented the other workshop, she was our volunteer, um, but we are also, I'm in charge for our trainers pool uh, running the on arrivals and midterms uh, for the German National Agency, we are one of the five providers here in Germany, and um, I'm part also for, for the program council, ESC uh, and Erasmus Plus in Germany. So um, this is my connection to the field. And besides this, I'm one of the trainers of this project line. Exactly. That's why I'm here. And I'm here to support Ben, uh, who has to, how to say, split himself into two. And uh, with a mobile phone, screen sharing is not uh, so relaxing thing. Um, that's why. It's okay. I remember the first rule of my first seminar volume uh, in Cyprus was expect the unexpected. Exactly. That's what we are uh, <laughs> doing today. So yes, to conclude, uh, I'm uh, Benjamin. I'm working for Orpist in uh, Marseille. Uh, we are coordinating uh, European volunteers since uh, uh, the beginning of our organization in 2013. Uh, we host and send uh, volunteers. Uh, I took part in this uh, workshop and in this uh, uh, project with MADA because we have a strong partnership actually with uh, Madalina, which is working for Romanian organization Team for Youth. Um, and it was interesting for us to work on the uh, yeah, long-term long cooperation in order to help the newcomers in this program, maybe for organizations that are, it's not the hurt of the action, like it's, um, uh, they are doing volunteering uh, project, hosting one, two volunteers, uh, but they are also doing a lot of local activities. Uh, and it's how to involve them when we are organization with a lot of experience and sometimes a lot of uh, expectation from this uh, partnership. So how to, how to include them uh, in long-term cooperation. Um, so uh, what we did with uh, Madalina, it's uh, well, it's based on our cooperation. Actually, we tried, uh, we tried it uh, during the last uh, two years to go deeper in our cooperation to don't be only uh, um, between person, but also to to have a clear document, clear uh, a frame of uh, of uh, of our cooperation. So it's what I will uh, present now. Uh, Marcus, you can uh, please share me the um, Google Drive. Uh, what I will uh, present. So I will cut the video from now. Um, what I what we want to share, it's uh, we created with uh, Madalina uh, Google Drive, which is a base uh, between our cooperation. Um, so it's, uh, let's say the frame of our cooperation and some documents that we are using, of course, it's uh, each organization and each reality you need to to adapt uh, to your to your situation and to your um, do you have the um, can you share the screen marcus please i did already i hope it's visible i don't know if the others can see the shared screen it yeah. is visible yes i don't okay okay i see it now Okay, you can go in toolbox on cooperation. It's uh, the work that we did. 
So this uh, it's uh, an example of uh, what we created with uh, with Madalita with a frame. Um, so there is some documents here that I will uh, present later on, uh, but we can go in project. So proje project, for example, it's the share documents, share files that we create when we have a, a project with a partner. Uh, so basically, the coordinating organization is supposed to create this document. Um, yeah, and then we will uh, we will add uh, between the time everything. In this uh, in this Google Drive, we have uh, three three different uh, files. Um, the first one is the participant. You can go in participant. So this is mostly linked with the with the activity. So it's in order to help the coordinating organization to uh, well to follow the projects, uh, maybe to fill out the final report at the end, to have all the information needed. The same for the supporting organization to follow everything. So we start with the um, uh, volunteers. There is a, um, yeah, a file which is uh, volunteers. So inside, of course, you have uh, you have the file for every every volunteers, and you can add everything, every document that is uh, useful for the project. I don't know if you need to add uh, first the CV and the motivation letter, uh, motivation questionnaire. Uh, all the information documents linked to the profile of the volunteers, uh, maybe the activity agreement, etc. You can add it here. Um, I think if you open, it should be free. It should be uh, empty, right? Yes, because you are supposed to uh, uh, to fill out so when you start to have volunteers. You fill out with the with the document. It could be shared. Uh, it's up to you. It could be shared with the volunteer. So for him, it will be easier also. Uh, to find his activity agreement and some documents linked to the project. If we go back, um, if we open a new um, new file, uh, we can open, for example, activities. So then, for activities, of course, it it will depend a lot uh, on uh, on your projects. For example, it was really different for uh, Madalina and me. Uh, in the reality of uh, me, Orpist in Marseille, what we are doing is we have a clear organization that hosts the volunteer all year and they, the activity don't change a lot uh, during the year, so the activity will be mostly the same. Uh, but in the case of Madalina, they, uh, they have activities uh, depending on the needs of, of the volunteers. They are doing timetable every week. So for, for example, uh, in our case, it was really important for us to have this kind of uh, files to follow what are really doing the volunteers, also to have pictures, because we are missing a lot of pictures to, uh, as a supporting organization, for example, uh, to show what are doing the volunteer in reality. So uh, yes, it's good to, to have all of this. And then if we have other document as a press article, it could be here. Uh, if we go back, we have other files. We created uh, what we created a schedule. What I what I was explaining uh, uh, here, it's uh, for example for Madalina, what they are doing in in their um, uh, organization. It's every week they are building the schedule of the volunteer uh, of the week. So in our case, it's really important uh, because they are, it's a part of the volunteering project to, doing, to do a schedule every week. In our case, for example, it's less important. So we are not using it when we are hosting volunteer in, uh, in France. Uh, same with evaluation. Uh, interesting to have evaluation. Uh, uh, for example, in our case, when we send volunteer to Romania uh, to see the, the evaluation that are filling out the, the volunteers uh, every week, every month, depending on the organization. But uh, it's good to have a document uh, files with all the documents that the volunteer fill out during their uh, project. Um, yeah, same with reports. Um, if we go back with a supporting organization, uh, in this case, uh, for example, our organization in France is a coordinating organization. We are hosting uh, European volunteers, uh, and we have also some uh, 
um, some files shared with the supporting organization. Uh, so if we go with the uh, first example, it's important before the project, when we are doing uh, uh, all the preparation. So first we, we sign with them the partnership agreements. Uh, it's a good, uh, well, it's, it's a good advice that we, we send. Uh, I will show you later on the, um, an example that we, we created with uh, Madalena, but it would be uh, in these files. And then about the candidate, of course, uh, you need to clearly identify with uh, your partner how you will select the volunteers. If uh, you count on the, your supporting organization to, uh, to support them and uh, to spread the, uh, the offer to his uh, local network and to find the volunteers to select from inside, or you will pass through the platform, etc. So to, to be clear from the beginning, in case uh, what we recommend actually, uh, you are passing by a supporting organization that uh, will spread to, our, to his uh, local network, then he will uh, send you candidates and uh, this file is here to, to add the applications. So this is mostly the, the frame of our Google Drive. And then what we did, uh, it's to create some uh, documents to, to, help, uh, to help the organization uh yeah in order to uh, in order to to implement the, the project um we did some uh, some documents that we think uh could be shared easily and uh, we think uh, they are good documents uh yeah for all the all the cooperation and partnership possible um it like we can do it in order the first one in, it's uh, the application for volunteers uh, what we are actually doing in our organization, so uh, for MADA, uh, for Team Foyos, and for us in our PIST, uh, we are both uh, using this templates uh, questionnaire uh, for the application of volunteers. We are not asking a motivation letter anymore. Uh, what we what we felt since uh, since uh, we are working, it's. Uh, in the motivation letter, when the volunteer apply, uh, they are most of the time taking a lot of time to the form, and not uh, what is inside, what uh, what they really want to say uh, to apply. Uh, so for us, it was important to uh, yeah to have this to have a questionnaire in order to understand really the motivation of the volunteer and to to guide them somehow in the questions that are important for us. Um, so you can uh, you can see yes, uh, Marcus is uh, is going uh, up and down. Uh, so of course at the beginning we ask for the well basic information of the uh, of the volunteers, uh, what is his uh, current situation, etc. And then we want to understand the, the motivation. Uh, what is your uh, main motivation to go abroad? Why uh, why this project especially? Uh, why another one? Um, what you want to learn? Because we, we yes, we expect the volunteer experience. It's a mostly a learning experience, uh, etc. So of course you can adapt to your reality. What is important for you? Uh, but for us, it was really important um, to, yeah, to have this document, and it helped us a lot to understand the, really the the motivation and not have a letter that they copy paste to all the projects. I didn't say at the beginning, but if you have a question, you can uh, stop me anytime. Uh, yes, this is mostly what uh, what we have. Uh, we ask about yeah, particular allergy, <clears throat> previous experience in foreign countries, uh, what the meaning of volunteering for them, language abilities, hobbies, and then the the last question. It's about uh, uh, the last question is actually fun because uh, we always have a really, really different answers. I don't understand the, the same. Uh, some people, uh, they, they just send the ID picture that represents them as a photo. Uh, and some uh, send a picture on Google of uh, sharing uh, love and uh, traveling, you know, that they pick. And some uh, take pictures that uh, 
uh, I don't know, experience that they had in the previous uh, weeks, months, years. So it's uh, the last one, it's actually really funny, but we really like it because it's all uh, really open. Uh, yes, so this is about the uh, application of volunteers. Um, what uh, Gantt, yeah, we can go in the Gantt. Well, this is uh, for this actually uh, from our side, we are not uh, using it, uh, but uh, Madalina was using it uh, in team for use because they are involved in a lot of different projects for short mobility. Uh, so it's really important for them to understand which volunteers are coming when. Um, so basically every lines are uh, the projects um, and how many volunteers they are supposed to, to host. Uh, so this, it's in the case that you are hosting a lot of uh, volunteers from different countries, uh, from different projects. Uh, it's important, especially for organizations that host a lot of volunteers and are not a lot uh, coordinating somehow. Um, yes, because they, they, <laughs> they are not sure about which project is coming when, etc. So it's a bit to organize themselves in uh, when uh, they could host in which flats they will have uh, space, etc. So it's an example that you can use or not. Uh, you can go on Project Gantz. <coughs> Project Gantz, it's uh, something it actually that we, uh, uh, that we, we put in the, um, in the files with the supporting organization. Uh, it's in order to, to, to see that we go in every step of the project. So uh, this starts when the volunteer is selected. So when the volunteer is selected, we fill out the name of the volunteers. When the uh, mission starts, the mission ends. Uh, if we sign the partnership agreement, we will see it uh, later on. Uh, when we did, uh, we did the interview, if you want. Um, the travel to, to, to keep in mind the travel dates, uh, it will be important uh, because then you need it to, uh, to sign it in the certificate of the volunteer at the end uh, when the volunteer travel, etc. Also to follow if you reimburse it, etc. Benjamin, uh, we... sorry, uh, I have a, a silly question, but do you share this document with all, like, all your partners? The same document with all partners? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. What we, from our side, what we do, it's uh, we have uh, one doc, one document per partner, and then mm. uh, from my side, in my uh, desk, let's say I have a, uh, then a document that say uh, with all all the partner, but uh, they they don't see maybe the mobility of the other volunteer to don't. Uh, uh, be uh, lost, okay, yes. but but I create. Uh, this is for mostly for big project. If you are hosting only one, two volunteers, maybe it's not helpful. Uh, in our case, uh, we have project maybe with twenty volunteers, and it's helping us to have one of this uh, document with each partner. Like this, we can follow. Yes, if we did all the step, and to don't be lost uh, in the Skype when we say. Uh, you are supposed to send me the invoice. If the partner don't send the invoice, uh, sometimes we forget, etc. So it's a way to follow both in both sides. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But I mean, with all the partners at the same time, as you say. Yeah, we have one document per okay. partner, and, and uh, okay. Yeah. So far, so far, but maybe it could be a good, uh, good option in some cases, or in the case of I don't know, yeah, strong sure. partnership. Okay. Could be only one document. Uh, from our side, we decide to have only one per partner. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, so the travel invoice. If we sign the, the volunteering uh, agreements, um, and then the the information about uh, mentor, three days use pass, etc. All the information that you think it's useful, of course, you can add. Then the last uh, the last column. They are actually um, the information that you will need uh, for your final reports. 
so this helps us a lot, uh, especially when we are coordinating, for example, and sending volunteers uh, abroad. It's sometimes difficult to follow um, all the steps, uh, all the activities that did the volunteer, etc. So in this case, for example, the hosting organization is filling out. Um, and of course, we fill out uh, what we think is, uh, uh, yeah, what we, we think is not uh, here. Uh, yes, questionnaire, you can go on questionnaire. Uh, this is uh, what, what we do. I think I think it's a questionnaire that we uh, prepare. Um, okay, okay. Uh, this uh, was actually uh, in order to um, uh, to write the project. So in this document, actually, we are using it uh, before to write the project. Uh, we send this questionnaire. Um, so this is an example. We send this questionnaire. Uh, yeah, but I think. Uh, I'm not, yeah, no, no, I understand. This questionnaire, we, we use it before to write the project. Uh, it's, uh, let's say, depending on your partnership, but for us, it's really important to have a call with your partner from the writing process to understand exactly what are the needs of your organization and uh, of your partners, uh, especially when you are coordinator. Um, so in order to understand when uh, you will be sending the volunteer, when you will ask what are the needs of the organization, how you are uh, working together, etc. So uh, this is a questionnaire that we use before to, to, write, the, to write the project. And then, uh, so when you, you wrote the project, the project is approved. Uh, for us, what we do usually, it's uh, before to send or host the first volunteer, we, we sign the partnership agreements between partners. Uh, we, don't, mm, we don't put everything only in the activity agreement or the volunteering agreement, depending on how you call it. Uh, but for us, it's important, especially when you have a project with uh, not only one mobility, but with different mobilities. Um, yes, to, to clarify everything and, and to sign it and like this, it's, uh, it's better. This is a example of frame that you can use. Uh, so with the detail of the organization, clarify uh, what is important for us is clarify the communication, uh, how you will communicate between, uh, between partner, who will be the contact person for each organization, how, uh, if you are using uh, mostly mail, uh, if you are doing, uh, I don't know, uh, phone call every two months, etc. Uh, all the financial aspect, of course, it's definitely need to be clarified uh, before the before the the project is the writing. If you have a strong partner and it's always the same, of course, you don't need to to agree every time. But still, before the first mobility, it's good it's good to have a a first agreement like this. Uh, selection of participants for us, it's a kind of a, the main point in the volunteering uh, projects. Uh, because it's uh, definitely the philosophy of uh, of uh, previously the EVS and now the ESC. It's how how you will uh, you work on the selection of participants, how you will support them, how you will uh, welcome them uh, when they come. So it's to clarify really. This is really important to clarify with your sending partner how they are working at the local level because some sending organizations they are working with working with only few. Uh, people, few youngsters uh, that they are able to, to send and uh, they need a specific project for them. Some, they are working at the all the national level and uh, they can uh, spread everywhere in every platform. Um, so it's need to be clear how you will, uh, uh, yeah, you will proceed for the selection of participants. What we recommend uh, usually and what we are actually doing, it's to identify a sending partner to let to let him uh, find the uh, applicants, to do the selection with this uh, uh, potential candidates, 
And then if you had difficulty with this, uh, candidates to open uh, more openly to, to the platform, uh, this ensure you a better uh, partnership. Uh, then the last part, I forget the title. Uh, yeah, it was about administrative, I think. Uh, yeah, about administrative, etc. Uh, yes, of course, you can adapt uh, again this uh, partner agreement to your uh, reality. This is what we did uh, with Mada. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Uh, I think we can, uh, I don't know, share a question and let you speak a bit because I'm uh, out of voice. Now you spoke a lot. <laughs> yes. Sorry, it was not, it was not so non-formal, I have to say. I am sorry about this. Well, uh, extraordinary times now. Do you have some uh, some questions, some uh, comments that come in mind, maybe uh, to your reality, to your needs, um, some thoughts? I would have one, um, and this is um, we announced to the to the participants of uh, the the afternoon that we will provide some materials in the Padlet. Um, I haven't checked the Padlet for, for our workshop so far, just to make sure with you, and I can also check with Mada um, how far we can share, at least partially, some of the documents uh, with the participants of the workshop. Um, we have to check, of course, for data safety and stuff and security, um, so that the colleagues who are here right now can make use of it. Uh, Perhaps we can talk about it later. You have already the Padlet access, so you can see also the, the workshop results from the other workshops, but then you also have these documents on cooperation and cooperation guide, uh, guidelines uh, available eventually. But uh, yeah, then you have to answer that in Mada. Okay, uh, for us anyway, I think it will be uh, open. It was uh, the plan. Uh, yes, it's our way to work. So if the potential partner are working the same as us, it uh, will be easier for us anyway. So it's good if, uh, if it's shared. Uh, I will okay. uh, wait for the confirmation of Mada, but I'm thinking okay. it will be. It will so be don't better. throw away the pedal link, keep it, write it down somewhere, save it on your computer, in your notebook. Uh, there will be something also behind the first box soon. Thank you very much for uh, for this uh, explanation. Can I ask something? Uh, I wonder about the questionnaire for the participants, uh, where they have to provide like their motivation, because you had question by question so that they could uh, feel it easier than just writing the motivation letter. My question is because now I know that uh, when applying for a solidarity corps, normally participants have to register to the platform. Is that correct? And then in the platform, uh, also we can provide either VCD or some motivation questions. So do you go with this questionnaire you just showed us as additional tool to select the volunteers or, uh, or how do you collaborate it with uh, the platform? Uh, usually. Usually we try to use as less as possible the platform uh, because uh, from our philosophy, it's, uh, it's really easy to find a lot of applicants in uh, quick moments, but it's not maybe the best uh, solution to have uh, really motivated people to your project. And mostly it's not so open at the end because it's open only to autonomous uh, uh, volunteers somehow. Uh, what we do is when we select the volunteer like this, for example, the volunteers that we follow in Marseille, uh, we uh, select them and then we support them to register on the platform and then they accept our offer. So you can do when the volunteer is uh, already accepted, it's also working. You just have to send from your side uh, the offer uh, only to him and it's, uh, it's working. Okay, so basically you just first choose the volunteer and then you see if the volunteer is already on the platform or not and, and you connect through from them through the platform yes. later at the later stage. Okay, thank you very much. Other question, comments? Yes, Christine. Um, I wanted to say thank you for this sharing. 
and for all this work. It's a, it's a great job. And um, in a ResiNet, we are using two uh, forms, like similar. And yes, I, I think it's easier for some for young people. And um, I think the drive, the, the sharing drive, it's a great idea. I, I don't do it uh, from, from my side, but I, I think it's, it will be good to, to speak with the partners. I was a little bit curious and um, because maybe, you know, when it's a shared, you can borrow it without uh, any attention. And sometimes the partners are, are a little bit uh, lost when we have like uh, 10 partners in one project. So, you know, my question is when um, do they, do they play it? I mean, do they really feel all the information needed? And the second one is, uh, is it working for you when you have like 10 partners? Like every partner, did they know, do they know where to fill in? What to fill in? I don't know if it's clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's clear. Um, it depends on the project actually. Uh, for this example of uh, the drive that every partner uh, fill out, it's, uh, for example, a project that we are coordinating uh, in France and we are sending short-term volunteering abroad. Uh, it's really important for us because uh, for short-term, this uh, short-term project, we receive the inclusion support, uh, the hosting organization as well. And there is more documents to fill out. There is more information for the final report. So it was uh, agreed with the partner from the beginning that uh, part of their task is to fill out this document. And we have actually in our partnership agreement, this task. And if they, they don't fill out, we send them only 50% of the grant, which actually uh, they don't want. So they fill out the uh, document. And uh, yeah, so most of the time, if uh, you agree it from the beginning and it's part of the agreement and there is money behind, if you don't do it, uh, they do it. Good motivation. Uh, <laughs> good motivation. <laughs> and uh, then for other projects which is, which are more uh, specific, uh, uh, I don't know, specific uh, volunteering project or more easy somehow the partnership, uh, we don't uh, fill out all these uh, documents. We don't have it uh, from our side. So this was the example. If you go really deep in cooperation with your partner, if you are really motivated to have this kind of project uh, uh, together. Of course, you if if you are only sending two volunteers, maybe you don't need to have a huge uh, table to, to fill out uh, every two days. Uh, mm. Yes. So for, for example, for the long term, uh, for the long term that we host, it's, uh, we are coordinating. We are sending them some information, but if they don't ask for more information about uh, I don't know the profile of a volunteer, what the, the results they did, etc. We are not uh, doing it mostly when uh, we do it when we are coordinating and mostly sending when we don't see the volunteers a lot. Okay. Okay. Thank you. More comments. Um, yes, also, well, I wanted to say, uh, uh, also it's based what we did uh, from the previous question as well. Uh, we had experience before uh, European Solidarity Corps, so it's also why uh, it was uh, one of the uh, fights, let's say, when they changed over the program to, to keep the position of uh, the supporting organization. Uh, for us, it's something which is really important. It was uh, definitely part of the project in the uh, EVS. Now, uh, with the platform, sometimes uh, uh, the role of the supporting organization is more complicated to, uh, to do, to represent and to say, no, we really want to follow the volunteer, to support them, to find them locally. Um, so it's important from, from our side to, to keep this position of the supporting organization and to clarify, to, to have a good sporting organization, you need to clarify the every steps, all the role when you are writing the project and then when it's approved, how you will do. Of course now, of course now uh, with the new program, we will need to even more uh, plan the mobility for one year. 
it's uh, what they are asking us uh, in each country so well what we are doing for example in our side with our partner it's we take the winter to really planify uh, planify the the mobility with our partner to understand a bit when we will have a lot of uh, sending a lot of hosting when we are able to do it etc and to understand also the need of our partner at least the, the main partners that we have and then we have some exceptional uh, mobility but i think now with this uh, new program we will all need as coordinating organization uh, this uh, part of uh, yeah planification I'm sorry, maybe I will have a question because I just uh, got a light bulb uh, when you were still, uh, saying um, this. Uh, I mean, due to all of this situation with COVID and you know all the things that needs to be more digitalized and maybe some uh, partners could not even send their volunteers to the country, it's actually because Myself, as I'm from Serbia, I got I also had, had some difficulty with the national ambit, uh, national agency and the visa because Serbia is non European Union country. I don't know if you had this experience with countries that are not European or so. How do you plan on working? Like, if you, you have already a plan, of course, you have already a project, but how do you plan now in advance all of this? because we need to adapt this situation will like inevitably uh, impact of all of us. And I think, I mean, I believe that everything will be more digitalized and uh, maybe, um, have you thought about it? I don't know. Was this actually a question? It was just a thing that just crossed my mind. How to involve the partner countries, right? How yeah, to... especially because, okay, she's from Poland, I saw your part, and she's from your opinion, but like, um, Romania, I don't... Romania, 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 yeah. what, how, uh -huh. okay, I'm sorry, I saw that, still, still was, uh, the agreement was Poland, sorry, uh, um, yeah, Romania is from European Union as well, so, um, I don't know, um, have you thought about, all of this situation, how it impacted on co cooperation in general? Actually, actually, we do the same. For example, we have strong partnership uh, with Georgia, uh, with Russia. Uh, we did a lot of partnership with Egypt and Palestine. Uh, it's the same. The, the only difference and uh, only us can be the coordinating organization. And actually, uh, that means as we will be coordinating and maybe sending uh, volunteers, uh, you will need uh, more planification and more clarification of the role and tax, task, etc. So it's the same. Of course, the, the difference is uh, they need us to apply and to, to have the, the budget, that the huge difference. But uh, we, do, we do the same, actually. Uh, with, jo with Georgia, for example, we have a partner with a lot of uh, uh, projects together. And uh, every year we... We plan uh, the, the, I don't know, 10, 12 mobilities that we will have as hosting and sending to understand uh, when will be the best uh, to host and send volunteers for which kind of activities. Um, so it's possible. The difference is from their side, they need us. They need a, they need a strong partnership with uh, at least one coordinating organization to, to, to have this uh, budget. And uh, for them, it's important because maybe they will have uh, three, four, five different coordinating organization if they are hosting to have uh, not come not volunteers from only one country but from more um, so yes it's possible and you, you need to do the same yeah yeah i will just cross my mind because uh, it was something that recently happened to me but of course the situation will hopefully end so it will be in a way back to normal, but it was more related to digitalization as well. Like, did uh, I don't know if it will affect that much, but for example, I worked from home for one month because our project was like in between, you know, it was, it was starting, I mean, project. I should came to Barcelona since October, but we prolonged due to visa and due to all of this 
prior instance approval, whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it just crossed my mind. But yeah, yeah, I do see what you said. And thank you for answering. But anyway, it's clear that from the uh, since uh, the epidemic is here, uh, definitely we host and send mostly in Europe and with European partners. Clearly, it's uh, it's uh, we just start now to to planify again with uh, Georgia, uh, with some countries uh, we are not planning uh, something yet. So of course now uh, it's definitely more complicated. But anyway, our communication and uh, cooperation was uh, digital anyway because we are meeting. Uh, Usually, never. <laughs> at least we met once at the beginning, and uh, then the partnership is following. Except if you, if you have other project, uh, I don't know, um, uh, partner, strategic partnership, etc. To to do stronger partnership, uh, it's it's a good idea. Yeah. If there's no further questions or points you're happily invited to get back to the plenary there's more people gathering there's also space for exchanging with others if you want um thank you again ben that you did it uh, nevertheless we are in difficult situations here to run five things in the same time <laughs> <laughs> and one poor colleague got sick um thank you very much ben and uh a bientôt huh? a bientôt thank you all <laughs> thank you very much Thank you. Thank you.